The North Pole is one of the most elusive and enigmatic places on Earth, shrouded in mystery for centuries. Unlike any other location, it has no defined time zone, no landmass beneath its icy surface, and the sun rises and sets only once a year. This unique phenomenon makes the North Pole one of the most challenging environments for human exploration. For over 400 years, adventurers, scientists, and explorers from across the globe have risked everything to reach this frozen expanse, drawn by curiosity and the promise of fame. The era of King Henry VII marked the beginning of expeditions to this desolate place, and since then, it has continued to captivate the imaginations of those seeking to unlock its secrets. Many early explorers aimed to discover a northwest or northeast passage that would offer a shorter route to China and the Indies. Such a passage would have revolutionized trade, providing easier access to the lucrative markets of the East. Others, however, were motivated by a simpler desire, to see what lay at the northernmost point of the Earth. The North Pole, surrounded by shifting ice and treacherous seas, presented an enormous challenge to anyone brave enough to attempt the journey. Yet, these explorers pressed on despite the odds. In 1773, the British Royal Navy organized what would become the first scientific expedition to the North Pole. Led by Constantine Phipps, this expedition faced incredible difficulties from the outset. The thick ice covering the Arctic seas made it nearly impossible for the two ships to move forward. They were forced to use smaller boats to tow the larger vessels through the dense pack ice. At one point, Phipps considered abandoning the mission altogether when the expedition encountered an entirely frozen sea, with no clear path forward. However, in a stroke of luck or sheer determination, they managed to break free from the ice and escape into open water. Unfortunately, despite their best efforts, they never reached their intended destination, returning home without completing their mission. Over a century later, in 1882, the American explorer James Booth Lockwood ventured farther north than anyone had before him, coming closer to the North Pole than previous explorers had dared. By this time, the dangers of Arctic exploration were well known. The harsh environment had claimed the lives of at least 750 people across 42 expeditions. Despite these tragedies, the lure of the North Pole remained as strong as ever, and more explorers continued to risk their lives in pursuit of this frozen prize. The race to the Pole reached a fever pitch in the early 20th century. On September 7, 1909, the New York Times ran a sensational headline, Perry Discovers the North Pole. Robert E. Perry, an American explorer, claimed to have reached the North Pole in April of that same year, after 23 years of attempts. This was an extraordinary achievement, the culmination of eight grueling expeditions. However, news traveled much slower in those days, and it wasn't until September that word of Perry's success reached the United States. Just a week earlier, the New York Herald had published an equally sensational story. Dr. Frederick A. Cook, another American explorer, had reached the North Pole a full year earlier, in April 1908. Cook had vanished into the Arctic wilderness for over a year, and when he re-emerged, he claimed to have succeeded where others had failed. The world was suddenly faced with two conflicting accounts of who had reached the North Pole first, and neither man was able to provide definitive proof. The problem was compounded by the nature of the North Pole itself. Unlike the South Pole, which sits on solid ground, the North Pole is constantly shifting on a floating sheet of sea ice. This made it impossible for either man to leave behind any physical evidence, like a flag or marker, to prove they had been there. In the absence of concrete evidence, explorers were expected to provide detailed travel diaries, documenting every aspect of their journey, including daily distances, celestial observations, and other scientific measurements. Unfortunately, neither Cook nor Perry could produce this kind of documentation. As a result, a bitter public debate ensued, with each man attempting to discredit the other. For decades, Perry was celebrated as the discoverer of the North Pole, but in 1988, the National Geographic Society re-examined the evidence and concluded that Perry's records did not definitively prove his claim. Cook's claim, meanwhile, remains a mystery, neither confirmed nor entirely disproven. To this day, the question of who truly reached the North Pole first is a subject of debate among historians and explorers alike. In 1913, Australian-born British explorer Sir Hubert Wilkins embarked on a new kind of expedition to the North Pole, one that would take him beneath the ice. His ambitious plan was to reach the Pole by submarine, a feat that had never been attempted before. By 1931, Wilkins had secured the use of a U.S. Navy submarine named O-12, which he renamed Nautilus. This mission had two primary objectives, 
to conduct scientific research beneath the Arctic ice and to reach the North Pole by traveling underwater. The submarine underwent significant modifications at a shipyard in New Jersey, where cutting-edge scientific instruments were installed. By March 16, the Nautilus was ready to embark on its historic journey. However, the expedition was plagued by misfortune from the very beginning. A severe snowstorm forced the submarine to halt its progress almost immediately. Further delays occurred when engine problems arose, and a crew member tragically fell overboard and drowned as the vessel entered New York Harbor. Despite these setbacks, Wilkins remained determined to continue. The Nautilus eventually set out across the Atlantic, where it encountered severe storms. On June 13, both of the submarine's engines failed, leaving it stranded at sea. An SOS was sent, and the USS Wyoming responded, towing the crippled submarine to Ireland for repairs. After several more delays, the Nautilus reached Norway, where additional equipment, including a diving chamber, was added to the submarine. This chamber allowed the crew to lower scientific instruments into the water through a specially designed hatch. Finally, on August 5, 1931, the Nautilus set out for the Arctic ice. Mechanical problems persisted throughout the journey, and at one point, Wilkins discovered that the submarine's diving rudders had been deliberately sabotaged. Despite this act of sabotage, Wilkins pressed on, determined to achieve his scientific goals. On August 31, the Nautilus managed to dive beneath a three-foot-thick ice flow, marking a significant milestone in the expedition. Unfortunately, the challenges of operating a submarine in such extreme conditions eventually forced Wilkins to abandon the mission. On September 8, the Nautilus arrived at Spitsbergen, a Norwegian archipelago, having endured yet another violent storm. Severely damaged, the submarine was towed to Bergen, Norway. There, Wilkins made the difficult decision to end the expedition. With the approval of the U.S. shipping board, the Nautilus was scuttled in a Norwegian fjord on November 13, 1931. The dream of reaching the North Pole by submarine would not be realized until nearly three decades later. In 1958, a new Nautilus, this one powered by nuclear energy, became the first submarine to reach the North Pole. This new vessel was a marvel of modern engineering, vastly larger and more advanced than its predecessor. At 319 feet long and weighing 3,590 tons, it dwarfed the original Nautilus, which was just 175 feet long. The nuclear-powered Nautilus had a distinct advantage over earlier submarines, it could remain submerged for extended periods without needing to surface for air, thanks to its atomic engine. On July 23, 1958, the nuclear Nautilus embarked on Operation Sunshine, a top-secret mission to reach the North Pole by traveling beneath the Arctic ice. The crew consisted of 116 people, including Commander Anderson, 111 officers and sailors, and four civilian scientists. The submarine set off from Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, and traveled north through the Bering Strait. On August 1, after surfacing briefly at Point Barrow, Alaska, the Nautilus dove beneath the Arctic ice cap. It traveled at a depth of 500 feet, with the ice above ranging in thickness from 10 to 50 feet. Finally, at 11.15 p.m. on August 3, Commander Anderson announced to his crew, for the world, our country, and the Navy, the North Pole. The Nautilus had succeeded in becoming the first vessel to reach the North Pole by traveling under the ice. On August 5, it surfaced in the Greenland Sea, completing its historic journey two days later in Iceland. This remarkable achievement forever changed the way we view the North Pole, demonstrating that even the most inhospitable places on Earth can be explored with the right technology. And that wraps up today's journey through the fascinating history of North Pole exploration. If you enjoy this deep dive into the trials, triumphs, and mysteries of Arctic expeditions, be sure to give this video a like and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to Waves Discovery for more thrilling explorations and discoveries. And if you're hungry for more knowledge, click on the videos on screen and stay curious with us.